a man stabbed to death in a public library, a woman kidnapped and mugged in broad daylight, a construction worker assaulted by suspects who fled in a stolen car. This is just a small sampling of life in Washington, D.C. in recent months. Carjackings and car thefts have become a daily routine. Homicides are racking up at a rate of four, four per week. There have been so many attacks on people riding public transportation that civilian volunteers have had to create their own patrols on metro trains and platforms. We're the greatest superpower nation in history. This is our capital city, but local politicians have let its streets become a danger and an embarrassment. Earlier this year, local Democrats tried to respond by going even softer on crime and putting violent convicts, convicts back on the streets even more rapidly. Well, Republicans say enough is enough. Enough is enough. We brought forward a resolution here in Congress that will overrule the left's effort to make this catastrophe even worse. Democrats were not happy. The White House put out a formal statement opposing us. The vast majority of House Democrats voted against us. But then President Biden had an epiphany. He reversed himself. The public pressure was so great that the president now says he wants to sign the same Republican bill that he had previously announced he opposed. The headlines tell the story. Biden's about face on D.C. crime bill shows Democrats on the defensive. The Democrats' flip-flop is good news for the residents of the District of Columbia and the 300-plus million Americans who deserve, deserve to be able to visit their capital in peace. But dinner, our Democratic friends are not getting off the hook this easily. They're not going to be able to duck the heat for the violent crime surge to which their policies, their rhetoric, and their political movement have directly contributed. What about all the Americans who live in cities and neighborhoods all across our country? In my hometown of Louisville, violent crime has become an unwelcome daily fixture. Since the start of the pandemic, over <clears throat> 500 lives have been lost to homicide. Dozens of the victims have been children, and last fall a car was stolen on the average of two point, every, one every 2.5 hours. <clears throat> Minneapolis has seen a 19% more vandalism than at this point last year. San Francisco, 18% more robberies. Chicago, this year's rate of car theft is already 138% higher than last year's. In St. Louis, kidnappings are up 113%. Over the weekend, in Atlanta, dozens of rioters attacked and laid siege to the site of the city's future public safety training center. Public safety training center. These people lit construction equipment on fire and aimed fireworks and Molotov cocktails at police officers. 23 of these radical leftists have been charged with domestic terrorism. <clears throat> so this is what happens. This is what happens when the political left spends years, years spotlighting anti-law enforcement rhetoric. This is what happens when Democrats at all levels decide we need fewer arrests, shorter sentences, and more generosity to criminals at the expense of less justice for victims and for families. This is what happens when far-left dark money flows to radical candidates for district attorney's offices, and the liberal DAs simply refuse to prosecute whole sections of the criminal code. This is what happens after every single Senate Democrat voted on party lines against additional police funding 
just last year. Every Democratic senator voted in lockstep against Senator Rubio's amendment that would have re redirected some of their massive reckless taxing and spending spree to actually fund law enforcement. So look, nobody will confuse Washington Democrats' last minute reversal on this one resolution for a road to Damascus moment on the crime issue. The American people are a lot smarter than that. 